expect that this amendment will be rejected on procedural grounds, but it shouldn't be because it is highly responsive to a good point made by Mr. Raskin. Mr. Raskin made the point that whatever your view of January 6th, the idea of localizing the entire thing on Ray Epps would seemingly be unfair. And what we saw in the Michigan case is that you would you, you saw a dozen federal assets and agents involved in just one small matter. And so I think that the amendment is well-founded to ensure that we are responsive to the Raskin concern that is a legitimate one. And, you know, one thing you kind of notice is that, you know, feds are like cockroaches. You see one outside the walls, there's probably 10 behind the walls that you don't see. And in this particular case, we deserve the truth. The answers about what the federal government's involvement was, as Mr. Massey has correctly chronicled throughout this debate, when the Department of Justice has been given the opportunity to say that nobody associated with the federal government, prompted by the federal government, encouraged by the federal government, working for the federal government, increased the criminal acuity of January 6th, they have demurred in doing so. All they would have to say is nobody associated with the federal government increased the criminal acuity of that day. And I think that a lot more Americans would have comfort that at least on that day in that moment, assets of their own government weren't weaponized against them. But what we do know is that there were a lot of people who may have committed some technical violation of federal law because they crossed over a barricade that they didn't know had been erected, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes earlier, and then saw their lives destroyed and ruined. And it's just, it's quite something to hear, like, the crocodile tears from Mr. Epps on the left when he is the only person we have direct video evidence was encouraging folks to go inside the Capitol. That's what we need answers on. And the time of the gentleman has expired. Does the gentleman insist on his point of order? Yeah, yes, I do. Um, first of all, on the point of order, uh, both the gentleman from Florida and the gentleman from Kentucky just explained what's wrong with this amendment because they said they, they've, just, they've uh, had a change of heart. They want to extend it from Ray Epps to all the agents and assets of the federal government, presumably yeah. all of the right-wing Republican congressmen who were encouraging protesters to enter the Capitol building that night too. But in Wait, any event, that sweeps way beyond the original resolution. So if you want to do that, you're going to have to put in another resolution because we were just assured for the last several hours that all this concerned was one guy, Ray Epps, and what he did, and now suddenly you want to rewrite the entire resolution. So I, I will insist upon my point of order. The gentleman is... And, but I, I'd like to make one other point, if I could, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, before I break, which is I believe uh, my friend from Florida just described federal law enforcement officers as Wait, cockroaches. Is, is, does he have time to speak? He's made a... a uh, and, does and he course, have time to speak? Of course I don't believe they're cockroaches. I was describing I, their propensity to be behind the wall, invisible or not. And so well, would you withdraw that offense. comment calling feds cockroaches? Would you withdraw that? Uh, my characterization wasn't intended to be derogatory. Yeah. It was intended to describe... The, the, what a Florida man would realize about the propensity to see 